So we decided to go see this movie, uh, Chirac. Um, and the, the premise of the movie is that, well, the name of it comes from the idea that, um, it, from, since 2001, there have been more, uh, Americans dead in, sh- in the South side of Chicago than there have been in, uh, the Iraq and the Afghan yeah. war combined. Yeah. And, uh, in, uh. Like, Americans killed. Americans killed. Yeah, Americans only. It wasn't like, yeah. you know, they weren't like everybody in ever. But yeah. no, they were like Ameri- more Americans. Americans killed in war. Yeah. yeah, more Americans have been killed in the Chicago South Side than in Afghanistan or in Iraq combined. Um, now, I, I do want to say that... Um, see, it's weird for me because I, I, I grew up in a semi-terrible neighborhood so, like, I kind of understand what's going on. Um, I've always, you know, I've always tried to be nice to people because that's what you should do. Um, but, like, this movie was really interesting in a lot of ways. Um, number one, because it's based on uh, Lysistrata by uh, Aristophanes, first yeah. of all. Uh, yeah, he took the... Um... He, took the, he took the premise of the movie, which is basically... Women get together and deny their men sex in exchange for no more war, no more gang warfare in the South Side. And uh, it was obviously adapted to fit modern day Chicago, which makes sense. Um, they brought up a lot of interesting things. Uh, they brought up they brought up names from uh, yeah, the gun down. <laughs> yeah, they, <clears throat> they brought up a lot of names of specifically gun down black men around the country. And they also, uh, what I really liked about it a lot was, uh, I didn't realize this until we were watching the credits, but the main character was Nick Cannon. <laughs> you didn't know it was Nick Cannon? I didn't! It didn't look like <laughs> okay, him! Okay, I will say this for Nick Cannon, and um, uh, Spike Lee has a bit of a thing for this. He'll get, like, someone that you don't expect to be a main star of a Spike Lee movie and make him the main star. Like... Uh, with he got game, they got like it was like this basketball player, like who wasn't really like a formal actor. Uh, for Bamboozle, they got Damon Wayans. It's like you've got this, you know, comedy actor in this dramatic role, and here they got Nick Cannon. And as I as I'm watching it, you know, my brain knows it's Nick Cannon. This is wild and out Nick Cannon. I'm like, my brain is like, nah, this isn't working. But as like I. My, my feels as I'm watching the movie. It's like, wow, rap critic, this is kind of working. <laughs> no, because um, <clears throat> here's the thing. This is a very strange movie. It's a very f- frenetic, schizophrenic. It goes to so many different fucking places. I was so... They I didn't know. Up, I, I gotta say that um, uh, one of the reasons I love Spike Lee is because he hits you out of left field with like a lot of shit. It bounces everywhere. The first thing that I noticed that made this movie, like, totally awesome for me was... So, there's this guy who just keeps showing up the entire (laughs) movie in, like, three-piece suits with a pimp cane. With a snake on it, and his name is Samuel Jackson. Yeah, it's Samuel (laughs) Jackson, okay, number one. Number two... That guy just like I feel like the phone call to Spike for Spike Lee to Sam Jackson was literally like, "So look, I know you already did a Tarantino movie this year, but how do you feel about working for me?" And he's and, like, "And he's like, yeah, I'll do it. What do I got to do? Wear a three piece suit and talk about and, and say motherfucker a shit. lot. Just talk shit the whole time. Yeah, just talk shit. He's like, do I got lines? You got to rhyme. Okay, I'm there. And so it's like, I feel and, like way, that's part- the entire conversation that happened. And and, and uh, a lot of the film is spoken in rhyme, not in a uh, not in a formal way. It just kind of comes it's in every more- now and then. It really is like a Greek play. I would little be like, yeah. oh, it's like parts will just start. Well, rhyming. it was what really reminded me of it was there were like there were a few parts where like it, the rhyming was not evident at all. But there were yeah, your brain had to go like, oh yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. But th- I was, like that because that makes it more natural. Like one one part of the of the of the thing was no, uh, what is it? No, no peace, no, no pussy. pussy. Yeah, no peace, no <laughs> pussy. Hashtag no peace, no pussy. <laughs> and it's fantastic because all these women are like, yeah, no peace, no pussy, and then it flashes to like 
Australia and like Greece <laughs> and like friggin' Germany and like all these different places in your and they're and they're chanting it in their native language, which is really funny. Yeah, and, and they and, and I love how on the posters they change it to no peace, no peace, like yeah, P I E uh, C E. Uh, so basically, what happens in the movie is that w- there are two different atmospheres that the movie goes for, and it goes for absurdity, and then it goes for very heartfelt like. It'll go from one scene where they're talking about how, like, this is ridiculous that the, that they're giving up the their pussy and, you know, they go to all these sex crash jokes and then it'll, like, launch right into, the into like, the funeral for the little girl in there. And it's like, well, they'll give you, like, a little soft, like, piece in between and then it goes right into it. But it never feels, like... It never feels too much like, what the fuck? It, it's just kind of like, your brain, after both things happen, you just kind of go, like... This is really weird that this is happening. But as it happens, it's just this strange transgression. It's like, it's this peak and valley that it keeps going through. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, there, there are a lot of scenes. You hear a lot of names. Well, here's, and here's the thing that I, and this is what blew me out of the water. Uh, I forgot that John Cusack is a good actor. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, so. John Cusack. Okay, so John Cusack, um, actually, his character doesn't really have a backstory until, like, the climax yeah really. yeah, yeah i remember his yeah. character his character okay so he plays a priest a white priest in the in a, south in side of chicago and like it's no big deal yeah like. and they don't make a big deal out of it they make it like he's been there the whole time and then you find out uh at some point he talks about how he grew up in this area that he knew people in this area his entire and, life and he explains the reason why he never left yeah and he explains um, that i wanted to be here to help people because jesus was close to the poor and and what i love about this film is that when it goes to him you know this is like all right every black movie has to go to church <laughs> like that's a thing apparently <laughs> like i'm like, and, just, like sitting there like going, okay i know <laughs> i'm like i'm like okay i've seen some black movies but like i'm like sitting there going like wait did they go to church and straight out of compton Yes, they did. Oh, my for God. For the they, funeral. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> oh, my God, they it did. It wasn't as pronounced, but they did. Uh, now, he, 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 uh, here's what happens. What I love about his scenes, and he has two big scenes, and they're very poignant. What I love is that he's not just, you need to come to Jesus, and Jesus, yeah. Jesus, well, Jesus. Here's the he, thing. he gives you concrete reality, and, and, and the heart of it is based in the church and Jesus' so, teachings. But the reality, he, he deals with the reality of what's going on. Yeah. His sermon isn't just, y'all, y'all need to come to Jesus. It's like, look at what is happening. Well, look what, at how I these really, institutions are fucking people over. Well, it's yeah, not even... In so many words. It's not even that. It's like the first thing that really made me pay attention to him because I was like, oh my God, what is John Cusack doing here? <laughs> it really uh, is like, what does he do? And then you're like, oh. Yeah, right, so he was right. like, so what really got it for me was like, I want to talk about a life. And you're like thinking that he's going to talk, talk about, about the, 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 girl. The, the little girl. And he brings out a gun and he's like, we're going to talk about this life. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> like okay, do you understand how freaking Jesus is metal right now? <laughs> and like, then in the second scene that he's in, he basically tells the main character, Nick Cannon, who is known as. His name is Chirac. His, his nickname is Chirac. I love that ending, by the way. Yeah. Well, how they did, but I don't yeah, want to spoil but, that. But, uh, <laughs> but He's talking to Chirac, and Chirac just, like, throws, like, maybe $600 on the table, and he goes, this is for your collection plate. And he goes, thank you for your donation. As I was saying! (laughs) No, well, because he says, this is going to go to, because they said they're offering a $5,000 reward to anyone who who can... Who knew who Patty's killer was. Yeah, who who can tell him who Patty's killer was. Who's the little girl. So the way the... The way it starts out is, uh, it starts out with actually lyrics on the screen, and then it shows a map of the United States with just made up of guns. <laughs> Which, if that doesn't Look. drive, if, if that doesn't drive that this is really what this movie is about, then <laughs> nothing will. But then uh, they talk, like you know, you meet the main characters. You meet uh, Chirac, and you meet his girlfriend, and you meet. Uh, you know, you meet some of the other ladies. You meet Miss Helen, who's played by Angela Bassett. Fantastically, by the way. Yeah, she was Jeez. phenomenal. And you, uh, you know, uh, there's a little bit of sexual vi- of like content, like you a know, little bit. They're fucking <laughs> a lot. It's okay. They fuck. In the beginning like, of the movie, they fuck. Well, they, it starts off at a concert. Yeah, it starts out at and, a concert, and then they go back to Chirac's place. They fuck around and whatever, and then like, and then basically the next morning. 
Patty, this little girl, After is their killed. house gets... Uh, yeah, their up. house gets caught on fire <laughs> by... <the> symbolism! <laughs> their house gets caught on fire by... So, it's the Spartans and the Trojans. That's that's the game. That's where, the name of the group, and, yeah. And it was, was really hilarious to me because uh, the Athenians uh, built the Trojan horse... And Sparta was the uh, the other uh, in the original play in Lysistrata. It was Sparta versus Athens. So well, Athens didn't sound as cool. <laughs> yeah, the Athenians didn't, it would have been a little too obvious. But I think that <laughs> well, Spartan way, and Trojan, like that sounds yeah, like yeah, it sounds great. So Patty gets killed. Uh, her mother, played by Jennifer Hudson. Uh, basically says, does nobody know who did this? Like, what's wrong with this picture? I, okay, can I just say, I did not like Jennifer Hudson's performance. I didn't like it. I, I you, you love the shit out of it. I didn't love it. I just didn't think that you... When, when it first happens, when that child is like, mm, gone, I was like, she comes out, she looks like just a bystander, just like, oh, what happened? What happened? Oh, no, this is... I was like... The child is dead, woman. Like, yeah. Well, no. I, I feel like what, she should be more hysterical. She should be well, fucking no, hysterical. What I think, what I think was, uh, what I think Spike Lee was trying to go for was that she was initially in shock. Which, yeah. when you're in shock, all right, you don't understand what the yeah. fuck is happening. Okay, and th- there is really no telling how. Oh, when she's scrubbing the blood, that was a little, that was a bit much. Yeah, I was like, you wouldn't even have the mom do that. This is fucked up. <laughs> well, I feel like it's more of a symbolic. Yeah. Um, she's scrubbing the blood, everyone's blood from the streets. Oh yeah, yeah. See, I think it's more symbolic but, than uh, you know just scrubbing up patties. A, a lot of things that happen in the movie are. Uh, you, when you're, it, it's funny. It really is this sort of sense of when it happens, you're like, this doesn't make, this wouldn't actually happen. Like this couldn't but, happen like this. But like, then you go like, a lot of the movie is symbolism. Yeah, yeah, it's symbolic. Like when they then, take over the fucking national. Yeah, they take over the national guard armory. It's okay, like, so, what? So, so in a ridiculous scene. Okay, so, 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 so here we go. So Patty dies. Uh, they have the funeral. So the women get together and they're like, well, we should deny sex to the men's. And, so that um, we can finally have some fucking peace. Yeah, like, so that yeah. we can have people, like, not get shot to death. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, uh, Liz Strata, who is the main girl, uh, she moves in with Miss Helen. And uh, they talk about it. And as the movie slowly progresses, every woman on the planet takes part of this Yeah, oath. it just slowly starts. So yeah, it starts yeah. in Chicago's south side. And then it starts, like, escalating to everyone in the world. So it ta- the movie takes place over three months. Now, what's really interesting about this is uh, Liz Strada has a big speech to I don't know his name. The guy, the guy who was working for the government, the black guy from the government. The light skinned dude. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember who he was. Okay, so it was like a light skinned guy, and uh, he was like, you know, you guys are you know being rowdy. Oh yeah, yeah. And, he, and she literally comes down and like she's on top of this roof with a sign that says "No peace, no pussy." Yeah. And she's telling him, she's like, "Oh really? So it's okay that you ignore us?" And he's like, "Well, you're doing it to yourselves." And then she names yeah. every name. Yeah. She names them all. She names Mike Brown, Tamir Rice. Um, she names Freddie Gray. Uh, she names a lot of names. Yeah. What like, I, I can't even do it justice. And then, like, she's like, Black Ma- Lives Matter. Here's it, it the problem. says it. Like, just says it. Like, yeah. it's not a hashtag. It's just like... Black Lives Matter. Yeah. And then she's like, because you don't respect us. Our lives may be fucked up, but you don't respect yeah, us. Yeah, it's like, you don't get to not respect us as people. Yeah. And, and um, what I like is that the movie is about black-on-black black violence. And, like, you know how every time a police shooting happens, they're like, why don't black people care? It's like, no, we do. And, in fact, this movie pinpoints the the... The main concern. It's not like motherfuckers get shot and we just sit around twiddling our tw- thumbs. Like, there is concern within the so neighborhood. You are going to say twiddling our twats. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, it's concern within the neighborhood. And I like how this movie isn't about police brutality, but how it comes up in the poignant scene where they're co- confronting the cops. And how they're set and how and it's po- used. And, it's and so what's perfect. really funny is, is, is the mayor, the mayor of, of Chicago, oh, yeah. literally says... Do not engage. He says this to them. He's like, no, 
You're going to you're going to do whatever you can, but you will not engage. Well, like, it's because they don't have weapons. Yeah, because they don't yeah. have weapons. These are seventy five women in this place that have and, no weapons. And they were trying to find some excuse. They were like, "Oh, how many are dead?" It's like none are dead, but some are wounded, right? It's like none no. at all. Some take prisoner. Actually, they let them go. Yeah, <laughs> they like, were trying to find an excuse to shoot up this place. But it's like if they're not if they're not causing any like direct threat. Yeah, there's they're nothing just like, they really they're do. Just like literally, <laughs> they're just, just some, occupying the armory. Yeah, they're occupying the armory. So at some point in the film, like near the climax, like the guy goes, uh, the mayor goes. So uh, the president's wife took the oath. <laughs> and <laughs> the president the of the time, free fucking world. <laughs> and then and what's really funny about this is that the only thing I could think of was. Michelle Obama, you go, girlfriend. <laughs> that was like the only thing I could think of, which I really want to know what she thinks about this movie. I, I, I love how the movie does, uh, it focuses a lot on, um, it focuses a lot on women. Yeah, black women. I love that it focuses not, yeah, not only on women, but black women. And it focuses a lot on, oh, and the one poignant scene that I really like a lot, uh, which really drove the point home for me. Uh, so... Uh, Miss Helen is tending her garden and yeah, he, I the did, guy I was wondering whether or not that so, scene felt necessary so the guy what? comes up and he says is your sister <laughs> home and she goes no she went to Alabama to go visit her family and he was like well here's uh, you know I'm here to talk about her son the awkward fucking dude and she was like well what about him and he handed her an insurance card and she just fucking lights it's into like, that guy. And he's like, well, you know, you might want to uh, insure him just in case, uh, you know, you, you want to get uh, some money out of that. And it's like, you motherfucker trying to come down here and take advantage of my goddamn f- family. Like, oh my God. Yeah, and I think the reason that it was included in the film was to kind of drive home the point that... Uh, um, people are she, taking advantage no, of... No, no, that white... And specifically because it was a white guy, I think that... No, he's black. He's just light-skinned. No, he was white. No, that's a black dude. I know him. I, I, he's an actor. He's been in a lot of. Spiky he looks movies. really white. He looks really white. But he's <laughs> like, he's like, he's like light skinned. So, so he like, but what I think is one of the, and I think the reason they specifically cast him because he looks so white. Yeah. Is looks, that to a white person that looks normal, but to a to a black person watching it, it's like if you don't know who that guy is. It looks like white people are not caring about what's happening to black lives mm. and that it's they're basically extorting sort of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I really think that a lot of the choices that Spike Lee made were to <laughs> drive the point home that, yes, black lives matter, but here's the problem. The problem is is that not everybody believes that. Yeah, and, and it's like within our own community we need to believe it. And Yeah, because the, the, the gangsters don't really believe it yeah, either. And, 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 they're bo- and they're all black. They're yeah. like literally like, well... I'm gonna go kill a guy. And it's not that they're like, I don't believe it. It's just like they have no incentive to believe it. And, and then as soon as they start like getting injured and like you know, the, at one this point is the, the one film, scene where they like, I love how the Spike Lee movies. They'll just have a scene where they just look at the camera and just tell you what the fuck is happening. Yeah, and then like <laughs> so Sam crazy. Jackson, Sam Jackson stands up off of a off of a fucking tank. In this that says penis envy on it. Yeah, that says oh, that was great. penis envy. And then <laughs> once again, just the mixing of just the social message and sex shit behind. But and then so these two guys, from, one from each side, come over and they go. You know, the one guy says, "I got shot in my spine and I can't feel anything from the waist down." The other guy goes, "I lost my kidney." And, uh, you know, I got it in most of my digestive tract. I need to be fed through a tube for the rest of my life. And the two of them look at each other like, why the fuck are we fighting? Yeah, why the fuck did this happen? Yeah, and, like, it's like, and I feel like that social commentary is basically, like, they don't understand that there's so much senseless violence that they're doing this to themselves until something bad happens yeah, where they have to late. actually realize that it's too late for them. Yeah. And I um, really liked I really like the juxtaposition of everybody slowly turning on Chirac until finally mm. he basically gets confronted by all the all the mothers who lost somebody. Yeah. And, that oh at the end. Yeah. Man, and that was like it, it that kinda, was powerful. I, I took Nick Cannon seriously, man. I was like, oh my god, okay. Like I just yeah. watched the movie, just like oh. And like shit. I really liked the juxtaposition of him only in purple. Like he was the only person. Yeah, who everyone didn't... else was dressed in white. There's yeah, a lot of every, well, like the only people schemes. who weren't dressed in white were the police who were dressed in black. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but everybody else was in white. 
And uh, the police sergeant wasn't in uh, white. He was in his uniform. Yeah. But everybody else was either in black or white. He was the only person who stood out like a sore thrum, a thumb in purple. And it was because he wasn't taking, you know, he wasn't taking it. And at the end, like, you know, I don't want to give anything away, but he basically... Wait, then... you can't give that away. <laughs> That's part of the tension as I was watching. I was like, is he, what's going to happen? You know, because, like, is, he, is, is something going to, like, what the fuck is the, what is this guy going to do, you know? I, I feel like it was kind of obvious from the beginning. I mean, it, it's like, from a writing standpoint, it's like, well, I mean, but, you know, from, like, a watcher, it's just like, how, how is this going to turn out? Like, what is going to be the thing and I really that's going to turn love, him around? I, I really think that, like, my favorite part of the, there were two favorite parts of the movie. Uh, my favorite parts were every time Samuel L. Jackson was on screen. <laughs> because, because he just... Say what? He, <laughs> when he, when he says, like, they ain't giving up no pussy. And everyone in the background says, say what? <laughs> yeah, he's like sitting there drinking. And like, everybody goes, wait, what? Like, what's going on? And uh, like, that, like, I just loved his juxtaposition of like, because he was the main, he was the main narrator, basically. Yeah. And uh, then uh, my other favorite part of the film was... Um, Basically, any time Angela Bassett was on screen. I will say, like, okay, here's the thing. If you are, if you, if you want to hear this, you will be very interested in it. But the problem is you kind of have to deal with, like, it can feel awkward between the seriousness and the comedy. Sometimes, yeah. Like, like when he's talking directly to the camera and then you see the one soldier who's like, I ain't gotta get laid. Like, that was a little, like... Okay, and then going straight into the, by the way, these guys have to deal with these fucking, like, their lives have changed for fucking ever because of this shit. It's like, well, that is a little awkward. And the dance number was... But I, I, I got it. I there was a dance up, number in this, by the way. <laughs> I, I got to chalk it up to two things. Uh, the, the cop, or the, the military guy, and the guy, like, I feel like it was kind of trying to cut the tension. Yeah, I guess. And then, yeah. and then the dance number was more of a like a because it took place in the church. I kind of feel like it was going back to like some like um, maybe some African tradition. Well, I, I because I, what they I think... don't look like traditional priests. Like they do have color on their robes. No, no, that was in the military thing. Oh, you're talking about the guys outside. No, they were just in their uh, in their. No, the cities. dance number in the was during the funeral. There was a dance number during the funeral. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, I was talking about the dance number. There's two dance numbers. <laughs> the one where they're in the armory and they're um and they're uh, uh they're doing oh, they're the dance. dancing to but, that song. But yeah. see, then again, now that I think about it, like it's representative of the sexual tension and how, it, yeah. like, because you know, dancing is. Sex. And then, like, because uh, I thought you were talking about the one in the church, but and then, I'm like, but then remember the scene where she goes into the when they first take over the armory and she's like. Hey, uh, army guy, and he like rips off his suit and like whole oh, doggy, and like oh, that yeah. was ridiculous. Well, my favorite thing about that was that he was wearing Confederate flag underwear. <laughs> yes, I mean it was which, funny which, when which, he finally which... figured out what's going on and just like, what Sam Hill? <laughs> yeah, he was like he was like not okay with it, but it was really funny to see like you know, um. A, like a guy in Confederate underwear yeah. get his just an old just guy, his <laughs> but um. It's the thing about it is the movie has very strong messages, but it has a strangely uneven tone. And if you want, a which I think works a little bit, yeah, like it, it it works. Like I can see it not working for some people. I can see some like for me as I'm watching it, I got I got the feeling of oh my god. There, there's a lot of things that they mentioned there that feel like very fucking recent. Like they shot this movie like last week. Like they mentioned some people that like literally the story was just like two weeks ago. I could swear. And then they mentioned like the Drake beef. The Drake and uh, Meek Mill beef. They're like, they're like, uh, it was like randomly in a song. They're like, while everybody's talking about Meek Mill and Drake, I'm thinking about the, the you know, this shit going on and for God's sake and something like that. And it was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, like how do how does a movie know about that so recently? Like, he, I don't know. You just assume that a movie takes well, longer than I that. Mean, but... I mean, the last name they mentioned was Freddie Gray, so I assume that it was shot this year. Yeah, and and, and something about the immediacy of it made it just hit a little bit more because like as much as I love the older Spike Lee movies it's like they are part of their time and I like that there's this movie that's just like cutting away from anything it, like that this is about this generation right fucking now and I like how it gets actors that are from this generation right fucking now and um uh, and it really what I uses really them really like is that they got Sam Jackson a narrator who was actually like at the t at the time 
of, you know, they mentioned, you know, uh, at some point they mentioned, you know, the Malcolm X kicks killed uh, Martin oh, Luther King. That got me too. That got me so that hard. Was, it was in the preacher's sermon. Yeah. That shit got me so fucking hard. That was like when I was like, okay, John uh, John Cusack, you like oh. re- have redeemed yourself. It, it, was, it, it was like, it, once again, going back to the preacher's sermon, I, I, you know, as I'm thinking more about it, the more I fucking think how much I love it because... Like I said, it's not just, we need to come to Jesus. If you come to Jesus, everything will be... It's just like, look at the reality of these fucking situations and look at how this is ruining our, you know, society. Look at how we ruin our society and look at how uh, uh, upper, you know, uh, upper motherfuckers um, um, up the food chain, look at how they take advantage of how we ruin ourselves. See, that that's the thing that this movie is about. It's not just about black communities uh, or poor communities in general um um crumbling from the inside it's about how outer people uh, about how other people take advantage of it so when people say this it's like why don't black people worry about themselves or not? it's like it's not just that though it's not just well if black people just become upstanding members of society everything will be fine no it's this taking advantage of it and this inertia and, even, and the shit that even they, during, you know even during the whole mayor thing like the first thing he said to the guy was like I don't care how you do it. Just fucking do it. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't give a shit about, like, these people. Like, when they ultimately come to the conclusion, and I kind of like that. I was like, it's not that everyone's fucking kumbaya and shit. It's just that, okay, we've got to get this figured out. Because he's coming at it as an elected official. And not as someone who's like, all right, well, we just need to do the right thing. It's just like, ultimately, the way you persuade people is by, first of all, take, taking away a natural resource... Uh, which I guess you could say pussy is a bit of a natural resource. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, for sure. <laughs> and, and you say, and you say, it's like, until, you know, we get this, we need to work on this. You come at it from a economical standpoint. You so don't come wait, at it from a... <laughs> so wait, are you telling me that if I deny you pussy, you're going to give me what I want? Uh, I don't know. Do you want world peace? No. Oh, uh, that's only, that's, I mean, that's the only way that can work. You, you can see on any other level, that just wouldn't make sense. It's not, it's not as big, you know. That's some bullshit you just said. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so what would, what rating would you give this movie? Out of what? Out of five. Oh God, really? Yeah, like yeah. that's too that's too. You less gotta now. do it. Can we do it like out of ten? Like, can that be a thing? Okay, all right, sure, yeah. Because I feel like five is just not enough. Because mm-hmm. I feel like I'd be like, like, like a decimal point. At some point. <laughs> uh, I'd give this movie an eight out of ten, actually. <clears throat> I, um, oh, okay. I, the reason being is that um, you know, as a as the only white girl in the theater, uh, I feel like it was not just designed for black audiences. I feel like one of the things that is great about Spike Lee is that he knows how to talk to his audience. So you know, the introduction of John Cusack, who was like really the only white guy who wasn't evil in the movie. Um, was kind of, you know, I- indicative of how he wanted to reach a, glo- a more global audience than just black and poor. Um, so I-, I feel like that and, um, you know, Samuel L. Jackson, every time he had a new three-piece suit, I got a little excited. Not <laughs> uh, I, feel oh, like, shit. I feel like on those... Mar- oh, by the way, can I just say, uh, the reason it got one point from me in general, because it was really going to be a seven, but... Samuel L. Jackson rocked the fuck out of that orange suit. <laughs> I and know, that, that was so fucking And I was dope. like, okay, here's a black guy, and he's wearing orange, and he just don't give a fuck. <laughs> so that just gave him a point in, like, honor yeah. of him being amazing at fashion, apparently. Um, so, yeah, an 8 out of 10, I think. I would even go so high as to say, like, an 8.5 uh, if, like, on a good day. Okay. I would say, and now I'm feeling bad about this, uh, a six or a seven, maybe, like a six, six. Why 5. are we dating? <laughs> because I I do feel like it it could be a bit wonky for a lot of people, and whereas I have a certain taste where it's like I'm cool with something being super serious and then just being cr- completely crazy the next minute to to release the tension of what's happening well, I feel and like- and how it's so based in reality that I feel like that weirdness is necessary. Especially the part where he walks out, uh, where Chirac walks out of the building, and, like, the fucking women come out of nowhere, and they're doing all this strange shit. What the fuck was that? 
<laughs> he was going pussy crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was that. I thought it was gonna. I thought they were gonna go into some like weird sequence, like in like fucking BoJack Horseman, where it's like we're gonna have this weird five minute thing where it just like free falls into the social commentary of the movie. But it just kind of it. It doesn't go far enough. It's just kind of like what the fuck was that? Okay, moving see, on. See, here's the thing. I think the reason you gave it such a low score was for two reasons. Number one, you review rap music. Well, it's not a low score. Well, it's a pretty low score. It's an above average score. Okay. I suppose. I'll let it but, grow on me. But here's we'll the thing. The reason I give it so high is because I've seen some shit. Like, I've seen some, <laughs> I've seen some pretty bad movies, and I gotta say, I don't think Spike Lee, like, of the movies I've seen from Spike Lee, which are not many, but I have seen a bunch. Spike Lee Marathon! Uh, <laughs> and I feel like, uh, you know, of the movies I've seen, uh, School Days, Do the Right Thing, uh, they are pretty awesome so i can't even get mad and i'm not gonna lie he has musical and silly moments in some of the some of my favorite movies of his so when well, maybe it's just repetition like if i watch it again it'll probably like stick yeah, on yeah i me feel like more, it, I, I feel like because it's your first viewing of it i yeah. feel like it's like you're looking for things that might not make sense now but if you watch it a second or third time you might like, yeah they see fall the into point. place a little bit more yeah uh so um, as a film that I feel like I wasn't seeing a lot of people, uh, I wasn't seeing it promoted that much. I, well, I just he heard about it on a whim. Uh, was, was on the it? Daily Show. Yeah, yeah. he was promoting it I just it on heard the about Daily it on show. a fucking whim, like, a little bit before that. And I, in fact, I think I heard it on, like, a radio station, like, randomly. And I was like, Spike Lee has a new movie. And, like, I'm actually hearing, like, a couple good things about it. And it just seems like one of those movies that, like, if you don't say anything, it'll just go by. And so I, I kind of was inspired to do this because... Ultimately, I do want you to see this movie. Uh, Just, you want people to see it too. Fucking see this movie. And, it, like, even even if it's, like, not uh, uh, you know, 10 out of 10 best movie of the year, I think it's an important movie. I think it's a it's a fun movie. And it's a very, it's a very, um, it's a very striking movie. And I think you'll get a lot out of it. Even if you don't, if you don't like Spike Lee, if you don't like anything about him, if you don't like the politics, I suggest anyone go see this movie in fact if you are more likely to not like him i suggest you go see this movie specifically can, you can i just say that like this year in movies has been like really like tackling some weird fucking shit yeah. like, <laughs> like fucking for, dope okay, and... so so we got this movie uh freaking fury road was all about chicks beating the fuck out of things uh <laughs> it's been a good year for movies inside, it's been a very good inside year inside out has been about the emotional turmoil of a human being which yeah. was pretty awesome uh, then we had James Bond defying physics again oh. for the twenty um, fourth movie in a row. If you just don't think about Fantastic Fail, this actually was not a bad year for films. Oh yeah, and then we had the Avengers: Age of Ultron. How Avengers could I forget Age about Ultron? Atron. And then uh, what was the other one that came out? Um... What other movie did we see? Straight out of Compton. Straight out of Compton, yeah. So, so with the exception of one movie, uh, I could pretty much safely say that this was a pretty good year. Yeah, for it film. was a pretty good year. A, a great mo- a great year for uh, like African American cinema. I definitely say. Uh, yeah, uh, and we still have one more movie to see that has an African American actor that's the lead role. What movie is that? Creed. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's coming soon. Uh, but yeah, uh, so we're oh goodness, we're over. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been our review. Um, it's crazy, it's ridiculous, it has a message, and it's really it's smart. Got a, it's a very good message, and it's a very smart movie. Yeah, you guys should definitely go check it out. So, I'm Rap Critic. And I'm Jess. And we'll see you next time at the movie. Wait, Roger and Ebert and Siskel, they already had the at the movies thing. We needed to come up with something else. At the films. That should be our thing. That so sounds so fucking sounds stupid. pretentious as hell. All right, uh, at the moving pictures, I don't know. <laughs> how about, how about... Watch movies. We watch movies. Yeah, rap critic and Jess watch movies. There yeah, we go. Yeah. Done. All right. <laughs>